Hello and welcome back to the Commander. And this is where we take control of our character in a real-time strategy kind of situation and we make sure that we make the best possible strategic and tactical moves in field battles. Obviously, the only time that I am going to be actually taking manual control is in those times where I don't really trust the AI to do what needs to be done. For example, in bandit hideouts and in tournaments. Anyway, I was actually just following my caravan around at the moment because I wanted to actually take a look and see exactly what kinds of units they have. As you can see, it seems like they have a veteran caravan guard. They have nine of those in actual fact, which is pretty good in my opinion. And we're probably just going to be leaving them alone now. So. My caravan can just go and do whatever it wants to do. And hopefully that's going to be really, really good. Uh, because I need the money. <laughs> I need the money super, super badly. As you can see, we are getting a pretty significant profit already, which is quite... Uh, it's a bit weird, actually. I'm not sure why I'm making money at all. Because as you can see, my current profits are not outweighing my wages. So that's a bit strange, but... I'm going to assume that that is just because it has just started, potentially. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I thought I would start off the episode here because I think it's kind of interesting to see what actually happens with the caravan, and I didn't really want to miss or have you miss any of that detail. Because inevitably, it is going to be quite interesting to see whether she is actually able to do anything for us, and hopefully I'll be able to earn some more renown in this episode as well. Now, there are a huge amount of horses available here, and this is exactly where I was going to go next. Someone actually mentioned this as well. Um, this is something I've done in the past, too. And again, it just, for some reason, it just always slips my mind. I don't know why. I, my memory, as I say, is terrible. So apologies for that. But thank you very much for the reminder, because that has just sparked off a number of extra possibilities. And this enables me now to potentially buy some horses and take them to wherever, and it's going to be exceptional. It's going to be really, really cool. Because if I take this to, um, as far as I'm aware, Vlandian territory really desires horses a huge amount. I think someone said that Batanian territory is also really good. And, well, Kuzate, not so much, because they have a lot of, well, need for horses and so on, but they, they generally tend to um, produce them quite a bit. Anyway, we're going to buy five of these for... 150 each and I'm going to go into the tournament here as well because you know there's always going to be some kind of armor or whatever and I'm going to be able to potentially uh, you know sell that and make a uh, decent-ish profit on it because it, of course it's basically a gift you know it's basically free and, uh, and well I, I can't say no to a gift can I I think that's quite, that's quite nice isn't it anyway this guy is going to be proving to be a bit difficult for us or maybe not no, never mind. He's just basically standing there allowing me to kill him, which is nice. Oh, yes. My blue team seems to be doing a fantastic job as well. Seems like the red team is the only thing that is... Oh, 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 hello. We are murdering. Oh, it's because we got a named on our side. Oh, okay. That's the reason. Okay, that kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? Oh, dear. All right. Well, that's making everything so much, so much simpler for us. And now I'm up against the named. Oh, well, this is actually fine because we've just been given some... Some wonderful throne weapons where we can do some nice damage. Hopefully I'm not going to... Ooh, I didn't even have my shield up. I just moved to the right. That was hilarious. Okay, that would have been very painful if I had made that mistake. Can we get a headshot? No. Oh, oh, oh. In the chest? Okay, well, that's good enough. One hit should get him. One good hit should get him. I need about 40 damage. Nope. I was trying for the head, you see. That's the point. If I got the overhead to go through, then I probably would have had a pretty decent time. But obviously, as it stands, I'm not really getting too lucky with that. Okay, this guy is a bit wily. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't really have a great deal of athletic skills. So it is making things much, much more difficult than it has to be. Because usually what I would do in those kinds of situations, if I had a large amount of athletics, or shall we just say a decent amount because right now I have about what 20 I think or 30 or something like that so yeah I mean it's very low so if I had I don't know a uh, hundred or something like that I would probably be able to um, outrange the opponent quite dramatically and then that would enable us to do what we need to do so yeah that's kind of what I was hoping for but unfortunately no 
Ooh, 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 wait a minute. Hello. You know, you know, I'm not going to give you the, the chance to, to finish me off. Thank you. All right, there we go. Not bad. Okay, so up against another Azerite infantry here. I do have thrown weapons once again, so I'm actually wondering whether we should try for the, the long range. Oh, we actually hit his shield. I'm very surprised at that. Nice. Okay, in the chest. And can we get another one? Yes, we did. Okay, great. That's actually all I really wanted to do. Didn't really see the necessity for anything more because there you go. Wonderful, nice little slash to finish things off. And we got a nice, a, a little bit amount of renown. I, I'd like to get some more tasks if at all possible, but that's the thing. Every single task that I'm seeing right now from these places are all to do with caravans in some way or another. And of course, caravans, that's great. You know, usually I'd be leaping at the chance to do something like this. But the way that it works is I, I just don't know, you know, I just don't know whether I would be able to even accomplish it. I don't know whether victory would be awaiting us because, well, <laughs> doing these things usually gives you uh, about 40 enemies. Obviously, in the case of an escort caravan mission, it's going to be even, even tougher. So that might not even be working. But yeah, as you can see, these horses are not really going to be selling for too much here. Um, they're going to sell for about 50 gold more than what we what we paid for them. But it's not bad. You see, it's not bad. It's still not bad. But I would like to see how much um, potentially one of the Vlandian thieves would give us. Because from my reckoning, I think we'd probably get about... Um, I'm thinking maybe 300, maybe double. Maybe double the amount that we paid, which would be quite nice. Anyway, my trade skill is almost at 50, which is really nice. Basically, what I want to try to do is get my trade goods up as fast as possible. I'd like to get mm, this. Yes, I really want to get this. Traveling rumors. This is not obviously one of the most... <laughs> it's not one of the most powerful things in the world, but it is definitely something that will be useful. Very, very useful for me because I am going to be having another caravan. As soon as I have enough money, I'm going to get another caravan and then we're going to be having two of them running around. And hopefully that is then going to be able to earn me a lot of trade experience. It's going to get me even more trade rumors. And then me, myself, I'm going to be running around too and attempting to trade as much as I can with the surplus cash. At least that's the, uh, that's the hope at least. All right, so now here's the thing. Usually what I would do is I would take minus 15% armor weight, but because I have to be very careful about what my forces actually have, because of course we are mostly going to be a captain, so are you know, percentages and our various bonuses that we're providing to our forces in, in combat, they are going to be extremely important. So that's why we're, we're going to go for 10% weapon handling to foot troops. That's really going to make a huge difference. All right. I also want to get that last point in charm because otherwise, I, you know, me doing these renown uh, tournament things, I would be getting six renown every single time I do a tournament instead of three. That is an insane gain. That would be such an amazing gain, but unfortunately, I don't seem to be doing very well on that, which is very sad. Not sure why. Not sure why it's taking so long for us, but oh well, never mind. Uh, should we go for some more charm skill, actually? I mean, I am going to end up getting around eight in social. So I'm not sure whether we really need to. Hmm. I would like to do some more smithing as well. Should we just go for some more athletics? I mean, generally, athletics is going to be super useful for us in, in the end anyway, because we do have plus 30% persuasion chance here. Uh, we also have a number of other things, like, for example, this, plus 2% melee damage, um, minus, uh, you know, 50% charge damage taken, or plus 30% damage bonus, and so on, and so on, you know, you know, all that stuff. So we're just going to be leveling up social once again, as I say. I do want to get to 300 trade if I can. It is going to be a little bit difficult for us to do that. Um, I, I kind of want to do the tournament, but I also don't at the same time. Because what I want to do is I want to... Okay, you know what? I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do this task. I will go to the inn and I will try to work out a way to solve his issue. Even if that means me paying him for the... Uh, for the privilege, I suppose. Um, where is the game master? He's over here, isn't he? Yes, there he is. Hello there, sir. Oh, yeah, I have to sit down first, don't I? Yeah, yes, I'm not entirely sure why I have to sit down, but there you are. Okay, so you want a deed of land from my associate. I'm here to win it back. Okay, so I'm actually not going to be playing this game because, uh, no offense, but in my opinion, this board game is extremely difficult, and I'm not entirely sure how to play it, so I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm just going to pay him the amount, and there you go. So we paid a thousand, and... We <laughs> got 800 back. 
It used to be, and this is a small little tidbit of information if you actually missed out on the previous versions of Bannerlord, but in a previous version, there was a time where you would do this quest and you'd pay a thousand and then the reward for the quest would be around 3,000. So you'd be tripling your money and you would basically just have to go to the nearby town and speak to the guy just like I did just now. And that would be super nice and easy and really, really fun. But of course, it's very imbalanced because, I mean, you know, let's face it, you, you should probably have to win the game to get that benefit, right? At least that's the um, that's the thing that Tail Worlds obviously wanted to impart there. Anyway, we do have the virile trait here. If I actually get a spouse of some kind, then of course, it would probably be a good idea for me to have some children because otherwise I may end up dying because the AI, of course, has control of my character. So it's very, very likely that we may end up dying in some way or another. But for now, I'm going to be taking the plus three renown. I'm going to be waiting here for some time and then heading into the tournament. I wanted to wait there for some time just to make sure that the trait was actually active. Because sometimes when you take a perk or, well, shall we say, when you do anything in the game, sometimes it just needs to run for a second or two just for it to update with the various statistics and other things that you may have gained in that time. So yeah, anyway, there we are. That's a nice little kill for us right there. Now let me see if I can maybe do something against these guys. I want to try to eliminate the cavalry if at all possible. Ah, yeah, of course. Uh, never mind. Okay, these fellows are making it very difficult for us. I do have a bow, so I could theoretically use that, but you know how I am, you know. I, I have such a small amount of bow skill, I'm not sure whether it's, it's even going to be worth me using it. Should I even try? Yeah, okay, fine. We'll try, considering... I am actually going to be able to shoot these guys relatively easily. Or not. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a classic. Oh, no, there we go, there we go. We actually hit someone. Okay, fantastic. Can we kill this guy? Oh, we actually hit his horse in the chest. Well, that's not particularly good, is it? Uh, this guy might actually want to murder me. Oh, there we are. We took him down, at least. Anyone else? Okay, this guy's actually on foot. I might have a might have a shot at shooting him. Haha, -ha, get it? Shot at shooting? Yeah, okay, well. Whatever the case. Aw, oh, okay. Kind of thought that was a nice kill right there. Oh, nice! Hit him in the shoulder! That was a good one. Oh, I thought that was a hit as well, but apparently not. Uh, okay, well, I still have my red team here. My red team's doing pretty well. Nice little jump and slash right there from the minimal reach axe. Actually paying off quite nicely. Let me see if I can run over here and deal with the blue team member. Because if I can eliminate the blue team... At least then, we are almost assured to go through to the next round, even if I die, and even if all my people die, which is highly unlikely at this point, but you never know. Okay, I could get onto the friendly mount that we have over there, but I'm not sure whether I should really do that. Shall we just bring out my... I'm just going to bring out my my bow. Not sure why he's running over in that direction. That is such a... Uh, that, that's the funny thing. The AI is always kind of weird in these situations because it, it just goes like, okay, I'm going to run all the way over there and then I'm going to run into a wall and uh, <laughs> all that wonderful stuff. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Okay, let me just shoot this guy. There we go. 14 damage. Mm, maybe that was enough to allow our forces to, to finish him off, but I highly doubt it. I think that um, generally... He was probably on his last legs anyway. Okay, let me just see if I can do some damage here. Sneaky. Ah, oh, yeah, nice little sneaky attack right there. And maybe, just maybe, we can eliminate him. That was a... Was that a palace guard? That was a palace guard, if ever I saw one. Okay, well, that... Um, yeah, his armor was pretty shiny, so you got to... You know, you got to give him props for that. And hopefully I will be able to... There we are. That was actually perfect. That was one of the most perfect rounds I've ever had, where every single person was getting eliminated in quick succession and I only had to deal with well two enemies instead of the entire entire lot of them that was much much easier and there we go that was easy too all right oh we're up against that palace guard I think that's the one that we actually eliminated in that previous round I'm, I'm assuming he has some kind of grudge what do you bet oh nice we actually hit him in the leg can you believe it Nice. Okay, we, Okay, that's good. That's good. He's got literally no HP remaining, about 15 or so, which shouldn't be too bad. It should be a pretty easy kill for us. There we go. Not bad at all. And there we have it. Okay, so there's the six renown. Fantastic. And I believe that has actually given me 
maybe clan tier one. I'm hopeful that it has given me clan tier one, because if it has, uh, I don't think it has, no. Oh, no, no, it has, it has, as you can see. Bear tilt, yes, bear tilt tier has increased by one. But as you could tell, look at my, look at my, um, my army size. My army size is not increasing, and you know why? Because the game hasn't run, you see? And that's, that's exactly what I was talking about, you know. You need to let it run a little bit for it to do that. And we're just going to go and we're going to find a couple of noble troops while we can. As you can see, we've got some of these guys. Oh, wait a minute. What? Why do I still not have... Wait a minute. Does it not increase my additional... Par does, it not, does it not increase my party capacity? I thought it did. No, it does, as you can see right there. Oh, that is so incredibly strange. Okay, so yeah, we should be able to now go in here. Yeah, as you can see. Whoa, okay, that is a bit strange. I guess you're going to have to go to your clan screen to get the game to update or something. That's that's actually kind of weird. All right, well, we just gained a bunch of noble troops, which is now going to enable me to go into a fight against these looters. This is actually going to be super fun for us because this is the first time we've actually had a decent population of cavalry. And uh, we also have some archers here as well. So let's actually just take a look real fast and let's see. Mm, right, okay, yeah, well, we probably just want to do this then. Okay, I got it. So we'll just go over here, put these guys here, put these guys there. We'll put uh, our archers into a loose formation as well. And then we're just going to direct our cavalry into a situation over there. Make sure that they go over. Obviously, this is the thing. Using strategy and tactics against looters, it's not really necessary, but I kind of want to do it nevertheless because we do have, you know... Well, we kind of have to make sure that these guys survive so that they can level up, you know? Because we want to make sure that they level up as much as possible so that we can gain just that much more strength and then we can be assured in the knowledge that we might actually win in uh, various battles. All right, so... Going to tell my forces to charge in, tell my cavalry to charge in. Uh, my uh, my infantry is just going to wait here for a little bit of time because my cavalry is going to come in. Hopefully my archers, yes, there we go. My archers actually are now starting to shoot at them. There's the wonderful charge. Oh, they're going to get super, super scattered from this. Hopefully I hit a friendly troop apparently. Whoa, it seems like the AI controlling Byron is doing an absolutely fantastic job of mimicking me because that's exactly the kind of thing that I would do. As we know, <laughs> I am always going to be the one that will hit someone with a bow. And look at him. Look at him. He's, he's doing exactly what I would do. Wow, that's fantastic. I love that. Do I? <laughs> not really. Not really. But, you know, if he's seeking to mimic me, then he's doing a bang-up job, isn't he? All right. So we can now... Uh, oh, we can actually upgrade someone, but I'm not going to do that with the mounts that we have in my... Uh, Wait a minute. No, we don't want to. We don't want to upgrade these guys. Um, yeah, with the mounts that we have in my inventory, because I obviously want to sell those, and I don't really want to use them for upgrade material. So we're just going to very quickly go into the town. I'm not going to recruit any more people for the moment. I, I kind of want to stay, uh, you know, fast on our feet as much as we can. Let's just buy some fish, buy some olives, just a little bit. You know, not too much, just enough to kind of tide us over somewhat. And then we're just going to go over to Charis. I believe the best place potentially to sell horses is either in Charis or in Galend, somewhere near there. Um, but I could be wrong. So let's actually just take a quick look. No, this is actually bad. As you can see, this is actually bad. They do not have a shortage of horses. Very strange. Usually Vlandia is one of the best for going to sell horses, but... Maybe that has changed in the time that I've been playing. I don't know. Oh, look at this. 178. Okay. Right. I'll check one more Vlandian town. And if I'm not getting anything good here. Okay. Wow. Um, wait a minute. Can I actually buy stuff here for a cheaper price? No. This is 300. So buying it in Azariah territory and then coming over here is obviously fine. But... They do not have a shortage. So let's take a look at Batania territory. Because someone said that Batania is a really good place to sell horses. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow your advice. Because I personally felt like Vlandia was definitely the way to go. But let's have a look. Okay, that's 190. So technically, I could have sold my horses in Sanala. Which would have saved me a huge amount of travel time. 
um, for a, a, a more expensive cost. And that would have been amazing. But um, yeah, 196. I guess I will just sell them here for 965. That's, um, that's not exactly great, is it? Oh, a half-scale barding, actually, though. A half-scale barding is going to be real nice for our horse. Look at that. It gives us 40 horse armor. Bear in mind, I'm obviously not going to be using it, but I do want to give the uh, AI that's controlling me when we go into battles the most, well, positive chance of achieving victory. Okay, there we go. Yeah, two-handeds are a lot easier for me to deal with, hilariously enough. I am not very good with one-handed, surprisingly enough. Can you imagine? Uh, if you've seen me play Warband and, uh, you know, way back, if you've been with me that long, then you'll kind of, you'll kind of know that, hey, yeah, you know what? Uh, I used to be pretty good with one-handed. Not too bad, you know? Not too bad. And I, I used to be terrible with two-handed, but it's now completely swapped around. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the weight of the weapons really makes a big difference. Anyway, let's see if I can do something here. This is going to be a bit dicey. Yeah, as you can see, a bit dicey. There we go. Just had to move out of his range. That's the funny thing. Two-handeds have this really satisfying uh, swinging arc, and you can really take advantage of it if you move at the right time. It's all to do with timing, I think. Anyway, what you can also do is if you want to in a Batanian territory, you can fight around this tree here and you can actually have the AI uh, hit the tree multiple times instead of actually hitting you. And so if you want to, you can, you know, cheese them out a little bit. Obviously, I didn't do that in this one, but, you know, if you're having a, a, a troublesome time winning a tournament or something, then you can obviously do it through that. Anyway, we've got 61 in trade now, which is actually pretty crazy. Let's see what we want to go for. Uh, we're probably going to go for... Hmm. I don't really care about carry capacity. For, for me personally, I don't really care about that too much. It could be really useful for trading. Let's face it, could be useful for trading. Um, and what is minus 50% cost of bartering for safe passage? I assume that that is mostly when a vassal or a bandit is after you and they ask you to pay. Now, this is obviously pretty good for that reason but I don't expect myself to have any problems. So I'm gonna go for the, the carry capacity. Obviously, none of this actually gives me any bonuses for my party itself, so I don't really need to worry about it too much. All right, so we're not gonna be, um, <laughs> we're certainly not gonna be uh, converting any of these looters or anything like that. Don't really see the point in that. And we're gonna see whether some of these, maybe some of these villages will, will have some uh, decent-ish tasks for us, potentially. I would also love if we could, and we're just going to equip this real fast. There we go. Um, I would love if we could... Ooh, this would have been an absolutely fantastic place to sell my horses, actually. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. This would have been so, so good. Oh, well, um, yeah, never mind. Ooh, hello. Hmm. Okay, we'll just we'll just buy a couple of these. There we go. Yeah, anyway, as I was about to say, I would like to get, if at all possible, a workshop in a nearby town. And I think I kind of know which workshop I want to go for and which town I want to build it in. And um, maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's going to really, really suck. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually just show you where that is as we are traveling. So I highly doubt I'm going to get attacked. So let's just, let's just hope I don't get attacked, right? Anyway, um, wait a minute. Let me just click where I want to go. I want to go to Askar, I believe. Okay, so yeah, anyway, where I actually want to build is Cyronea. I want to build a an ironworks or an ironsmith, smithy, whatever, in Cyronea. And I want to be able to supply it with iron, okay? And now you're thinking, oh, well, where are you going to get iron from? Where are you going to get iron from really, really cheap? Well, there are two villages extremely well, actually three villages if you if you count this one and that's a silver ore village obviously so it doesn't really count i guess but the point is there are two iron ore villages really really close by to epicrotia now usually i would say 100 percent build a smithy in epicrotia because that's usually going to provide you with the greatest amount of profit but the problem with building a smithy in epicrotia is that you are literally having such a surplus that it doesn't, in my experience, 
it doesn't actually make that much money. However, if you were to go over to Cyrenea, you'll notice that there are very few iron ore villages in its surrounding area. And this means that tools are probably going to be at a premium here. This is a silver ore village, by the way, if you happen to notice that. There is an iron ore village over here, but this is obviously part of the Kuzate. If the Southern Empire are at war against the Kuzate, then of course these kinds of things are not really going to be interacting that much, and so it's going to be a bit difficult. There is actually an iron ore village over there. Hmm. That could that could potentially, you know, supply things a little bit, but again, it's not bound to Cyrenea, which again is the main the main deal here. Now, of course, this is going to be a bit of a problem with its travel time, but I mean, you can see here, it's not that far away. It's probably about a, a what a day and a half, maybe two days journey away. And if I take a huge amount of iron ore over there and I place it in the marketplace for my smithy to build whatever tools it wants to build out of it, might be good. I don't know. This is just a theory, by the way. This is not something that I've tested out. I, I technically did try this a little bit in a previous version of Bannerlord and it worked quite well. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a bit in two minds about it, you see. I'm a bit in two minds. I'm thinking, oh yes, maybe it is actually going to be fantastic. Who knows? So let's just, you know, keep an open mind about it for the moment and we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to sell my tools here. As you can see, we're getting 1600 from that, even after I purchased some food, which is pretty nice. I like that. And maybe we should actually start getting some sumter horses and mules and things like that too. So let's just buy a couple of these just to increase our carry capacity somewhat. We can buy this for 150. So, uh, yeah, so let's buy, how much do we want to buy? Let's let's get uh, let's get twenty of these things, right? Let's get twenty of these things, and then we will go all the way back to Maranath, because Maranath, as you could no doubt tell, has a pretty significant shortage of horses. So hopefully that's going to prove relatively good and lucrative for us. But if it doesn't, then I'm going to be forever sad. Anyway, I will put one more point in trade here because I really want my trade skill to level up just that much faster and hopefully we'll be able to get some more cash. So once I have arrived at Maranath, hopefully that's going to get me, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what kind of profit we could even be hoping for here, but I'm very much hoping that we'll get, hmm, we spend 1600. I'd like to get 3000 maybe. I'd like to get 3000. Not sure if it's really going to be doable. As you can see, we can sell this for 200. Yeah, look at that. We're getting 4000. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Really, really nice. And hilariously enough, we could even sell the Sumter horses and the mules for a, uh, a significant profit as well. And I'm actually thinking that maybe I'll sell the mules and keep the Sumter horses or something like that. And there we go. We just gained 4,300. Did we gain some trade skill from that? Yes, we did. We gained three skill points in trade, which is pretty good. You know, that's not too bad. Gotta say. I, I quite like that. Anyway, let me just have a quick look here. Where is, is that the bound village of this one? No, where's the, where's the bound village for the, for Remtoil Castle? Is it this one? Yeah, it's, it's this one down here. Okay, so I'm just going to recruit some more noble units because obviously I can just recruit them due to having My Little Warband installed. Obviously, My Little Warband allows you to basically recruit your own units from anywhere in the entire game, which is absolutely fantastic. Super powerful feature there. Anyway, I would like to do a task if at all possible. Aha, here we go. This could be a perfect task for us to take right now. Not sure if it's going to actually enable me to even win. I don't know whether I'm going to win this, but we're going to try it. So let's have a look. 1400, okay. Hmm, I'm a bit worried now, all things considered. Okay, uh, oh, forest bandits. Okay, forest bandits, huh. Well, uh, we have the caravan forces with us, so we should technically be fine. But I am uh, I'm kind of infinitely worried, you know. Anyway, let's just cause these guys to go over here. They're loose. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Uh, they are forest bandits, but they are on horses. They are all on horses. So I guess what I'm going to do is I will just tell my forces to... I guess just charge in. What else is there that I can do? Let's tell this guy to charge. Let's tell my cavalry to charge. We need my cavalry to actually be kind of effective here. Because otherwise, bad things are going to happen. Mm, I am 
Okay, okay, okay. We're, we're actually not doing too badly now. It seems like we might be fine. We just have to be very, very careful about... Well, these guys coming in with their pole arms and doing significant damage. Because here's the thing. Uh, this is usually where a player is going to be influencing the battle from a pretty, pretty big way, right? Because usually what I'll do is I'll eliminate at least five, maybe six of the enemy with my spear. I'll be able to aim at their head and they're going to just, you know, flop. And they'll, they'll go, you know, they'll go away. But because I can't do that, that is, it is basically all down to our own forces doing their own thing. And thankfully, it seems like we were able to achieve victory here. But I, I, I don't know whether we'd be able to do an escort merchant caravan mission because we just lost four people already. And if we fight, how many are we going to fight over the course of an escort caravan mission? That's the question. We're probably going to be fighting... Hmm... I don't know, three or four groups of bandits? I think that might be a bit too harsh. What do you think? I don't know. That might be a bit too much. Anyway, as you can see, our upgrades are also rather expensive. We're paying 800 for that. And uh, my, my guy actually does have a spear, but he doesn't seem to want to use it that much. Not sure why. Not sure why he's not using it, but, um, you know, if he doesn't want to use it, then he doesn't want to use it. But hopefully he will start using it a little bit later on. I, I guess I could tell him to hold fire and then just tell him to go and use his spear, which would probably be a good idea, to be honest, all things considered, because that's going to mean that he'll have a much easier time of actually dealing damage in the future with his polearm. So probably going to be something that I'll try to do. Anyway, we can sell some more horses here if we want to, but that's only for 155 now. And maybe Sionan has a, a bit of a shortage as well. So let's go over there and see what we can do. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't have a shortage at all. This is hilarious. I actually don't even know what's going on with these guys because literally they have a pretty significant amount of horses available here, especially mules and sumter horses. Pretty cheap prices, as you can see. I'm going to buy some more sumter horses, actually. How's my herd deficit? My herd deficit is absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of horses available and they don't want to share that with Maranath, which is literally just a stone's throw away. That's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, some, some strange stuff going on there. And that is going to be it for this episode. We are well on our way to getting another caravan and investing in our very own workshop. Hopefully that's going to, you know, give us the, uh, the uh, <laughs> eco economic founding that we really, really need. Anyway, I will probably be going for Raise the Meek or... Hmm, no, I usually take combat tips because I want the plus one to troop tier when recruiting from the same culture. So I will be taking that. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, yeah, as I say, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.